Hello, hello, and welcome to another Art Camp video. Today, we are going to be creating Rainbow Beetle Zentangle paintings. A little bit of a mouthful, but they're pretty fun. So what I used for this was watercolor paper, watercolor pencil crayons, watercolor paints, paint brushes, and of course water, as well as a black marker, or you could use a black pen. Now, as usual, I'm going to remind you not to fret if you don't have some of these things. Get creative with what you have on hand. So we're going to start by drawing the parts of a beetle. And I apologize if you can't see this super clearly. This part is not, um, I'm not pressing hard enough. So I'm learning with these tutorials. I need to press harder when I'm sketching. So I'm starting by sketching my beetle. And you can see this is the abdomen of the beetle, kind of the back part, the biggest body part of the beetle. And I've split mine into two. And at first I put an opening at the bottom of the wings, but I didn't actually like those and I closed it up. So you could just do kind of an ovally shape cut in half. This also looks like some kind of a heart that isn't super pointy, but you could try making your beetle's tail pointy. I'm oh, sorry, the back of your beetle's am abdomen. I don't think beetles have tails, but I may, <laughs> I may stand corrected. And then I started doing this part of the beetle. It's called the thorax. So it kind of goes in between the head of the beetle and the abdomen of the beetle. And then I drew the little head on the beetle and the two antennae. I encourage you to look up shapes of beetles or if there's a species of beetles that you find really interesting you should definitely look them up the shape of this one is based loosely off of the colorado potato beetle um, aka my arch nemesis <laughs> um, but the colorado potato beetle has a really be it's very beautiful so um, i start to draw the legs now a beetle is an insect which means it has six legs and I do one kind of coming out of the thorax or close to the thorax and where the thorax and the abdomen meet. And then one in the middle of the abdomen and one at the bottom of the abdomen. And with all my nature based art tutorials, I really encourage you, if you can, to get outside and find a beetle. Observe insects. They're super cool. Uh, even if they are gorging themselves on your beautiful potato plants <laughs> like the Colorado potato beetle their life cycles are super interesting like I've if you've ever observed a lily beetle another much hated beetle for gardeners you will see the different life stages and it's super neat to watch um, so spend some time with beetles this is your PSA <laughs> go find a beetle <laughs> and spend some time with it okay so my beautiful nemesis is coming into form now and you can see so the big part at the bottom that's kind of let's say heart shaped that is the abdomen the middle part is the thorax then there's the head and those two little things sticking out of the head are the antennae now there are conflicting pictures and i have seen conflicting things about where the first leg comes out so you can do it out of the thorax. I did because I thought it looked better that way. <laughs> or you could do all three legs on each side coming out of the abdomen. But you're gonna sketch out your beetle in pencil. So sketch out the shape of the beetle. You can see that this beetle is taking up most of my paper. It is quite large. In fact, if I ever see a beetle that large, I'll probably be terrified. But it's, um, <laughs> it's beautiful on the paper. Now, the next thing we're going to do is I'm using watercolor pencil crayons here. Again, you, if you don't have watercolor pencil crayons, don't fret. But I'm putting down a thin layer of paint so that I can plan out my rainbow. It goes red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. That is the simplest way to explain it. There's also some shade variation in between those things, in between those colors. But if you take those colors, so red orange, yellow, then green, blue, purple, and you put them down on your page with watercolor pencil crayons. That's going to be a good 
place to start with the blending of your rainbow. Now we're going to add lots of water to this paper and we're going to add paint on top of here. But this, this base layer of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple is a great place to start. Now I haven't broken out the ridiculously small paintbrush, but this one is still <laughs> comically little for the job it's doing. But if you know me, you know that I like to use a smaller paintbrush just to have better control over the water. Um, so for this piece, I want you to play around with rainbow blending. So start with your red, blend down into orange, add a little bit of yellow to that orange so that it begins to turn to yellow. And you want to get your colors to blend into each other. You're going to have to add a little bit more water sometimes to get your watercolors to blend. But when you do add the water, you get these super cool squiggles. Like, look how that's drying. I couldn't have done that with my paintbrush if I wanted to. The paints all blend and bleed in together and you start to create new colors. We started with just one red, one orange, one yellow, one green, one blue, one purple. But as I add water and I add some pigments from my paint palette, it begins to turn into so many different colors. I encourage you not to rush this part. Use a comically small paintbrush. Spend some time playing with the paint. This is a great way to learn the colors you like, how the colors in your paint palette blend, how much water you like to use, how much paint pigment you like to add. All of these are good things to know about yourself as a creator. Now I've put on that layer, I added some dots of water and you can see how it dried. That's dried super cool. I love that. I love the way the paint dried. So once I'm done, I get my, pi my pine tip. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I get my fine tip. All right, let's go with it. I get my pine tip pen and I start to outline the shape of the beetle. We did this in pencil first. Get the shape of your beetle the way you like it, the way that looks good to you before you do your paint. Once your paint is completely dry, get out your pine tip marker and start to outline. You want to get a pretty thick layer of black around the outside of the beetle. And then I'm going to give you a challenge here. I want you to create a design and you can base it on nature, on what you've seen, or you can just have fun and make something. So I'm trying to make it symmetrical. As I watch this back, I can see it is definitely not perfectly symmetrical, but there's a goal. <laughs> there's a general idea of it being symmetrical. So I encourage you to try that when you, so symmetrical means it's, it's the same on both sides. If it was perfectly symmetrical, it would be exactly like a mirror image one wing of the beetle would be a mirror image of the other. Again, I'm going with the goal of symmetry with the general direction of symmetry. So my beetle's a little wonky, but that's okay because I still love the way it turned out. So whatever I do on one side of the beetle, I try to do on the other side of the beetle. I've mentioned this before. If you are like me and focusing is something you need to practice, trying to draw things symmetrically, it does something to my brain. It calms my brain down and it helps it to just slow down enough to focus on whatever I'm doing. In this case, it's drawing, but there are symmetrical drawings in 99% of my notebooks and calendars and anywhere that I've been in a meeting trying to take notes, you'll see that I've done drawing all over the page. And that's actually something that helps me focus symmetrical drawing in particular. Okay, back to it. So this is something I've done videos on them before, but this is, you could call this beetle a Zen tangle. And that's a mindful art technique where you just fill up the space with beautiful designs that don't have to make sense. I love using, I have two different pens here. One of them is a little bit thicker and one is much piner. <laughs> finer um, and I'm alternating to create some thicker lines some darker spaces as well as 
spaces with more light, more space in between lines. Yours will not look like mine. You could take parts of this that you like and use that as a starting point for your beautiful beetle, your rainbow beetle, but don't, um, don't have too much of a plan other than that goal. Again, mine is not perfectly symmetrical, but the goal of symmetry. I also at the end here, you can see I'm adding this black that's called almost like a negative space around my designs. I felt that made the design pop out a little bit more. And I continued. I tried to make it symmetrical. I added some hearts because there's a lot of heart shapes in beetles and spiders and insects. It's kind of cool. And I did some lines on the legs and the head of the beetle and just tried to make it look as pleasing to my eyes possible. You and I are different artists, so yours is going to look pleasing to you. Don't do any judging or comparing. Just enjoy the process. The very last thing that I do is put a thick layer of black around the legs and the rest of the beetle. And this beautiful beetle turned out way more lovely than I could have imagined. And I'm practicing saying kind things about my art. So I'm going to say I love the colors. I could not be more happy with the way the water and the paint kind of co-created all those lovely flowy designs in the background. It just makes me so happy. And I'm a really big fan of the way the beetle turned out. I wasn't sure where I was going with this one, but I'm grateful that I trusted the process and I will take that with me next time that I'm not sure where a piece is going. All right, let's take a big belly breath. And remember that this is just for fun. There's no pressure to get it right, and there's absolutely no way you can get it wrong. I would love to see what you created when you were having fun. You can send your creations to the address in the description for this video. Thanks for creating with me, and I wish you a beautiful day.